I'm calling this meeting to order. I think everyone's here except Jay, so we have a quorum. And uh, we usually start the meeting with public comments, and I see we do have someone here. Would you like to come and join us at the table? Um, sure, if you have enough seats. Sure, always. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is C.J. Lammers. I'm an, on the faculty with the uh, Conway School, and Rich asked me to attend to talk about a project that he's interested in doing as a cooperation with us. All right. So, nice to meet you. C.J. C.J. Lammers. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Okay. So do you have any public comment you'd like to make before we get started? I don't. Okay. I just think it's ironic that there's a chainsaw going on. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know. <laughs> it's busy at work. <laughs> I staged somebody out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, shall I put CJ on in the, uh, uh, any other business? Okay. All right. Well, I would have been happy to, if, if it folds into any other agenda item, I can. Otherwise, I'll put it there. No, that's not on the agenda. Okay, all right. You also have uh, ten minutes. I can probably make it really short. Okay, all right. Um, approval of previous minutes. There's a few words that I caught. It didn't quite make sense. I have also made some more my corrections. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I've already heard. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know what, before we, hold on, before we leave public comment period, we did receive a letter that I'm going to read out loud. And it contains photographs as well, which I can, um, I can show the photo, I, I can circulate them out. It's dated September 15, 2017, to the Northampton Tree Committee and the Ridge Forest Lady Tree Warden and, and Donna Lascalia, uh, Director of Public we are requesting that the silver maple tree in front of our property on 79 Clement Street, Florence, Massachusetts be cut down. There is not much left to the tree because branches were cut overhanging the wires. The tree is full of ants. There is a hole at the bottom of the tree near the ground that could be hollow. A large root from this tree is growing along the north side of our house near the foundation. On September 12, 2017, Richard Parsetti came and inspected the tree. They cut into the root along the north side of our house. He what said, roots are rotted. Richard said, we need to pay for two legal notices in the Gazette and post a notice on the tree that we have requested it being taken down. Rich also stated that we would have to pay to have the tree cut down. We will not pay for the removal of the tree that is on city property. Exclamation point. The tree is not a shade tree. The branches at the top are near the wires. We are concerned about our safety of this tree falling on our house in the event of high wind, hurricane, or tornado. Public safety is the concern for the trees being taken down at Forbes Library. As, taxpayer, why it's, as taxpayers, why isn't our safety being considered? The hazard of it falling on our roof doesn't concern Richard personally. We, bought, we brought a letter to Northampton Tree Committee on October 26, 2011. We also provided photos then. Enclosed with this letter are recent photos of the tree taken September 14, 2017. We hope you will consider our safety and consider that the branches are near the wires. Recently, a transformer caught fire during the thunderstorm in front of 73 Clement Street. The transformer then lit the branches on fire. The Northampton Fire Department was here. Branches near wires are a hazard to the wires. We hope you can see the sense of the tree being taken down. If the tree warden can be concerned about the public safety regarding Forbes Library, why isn't he concerned about our safety? Signed, James Nolan, Donna Nolan, 790. Okay, all right. I'm, ha I, 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 I'm happy to do a quick follow-up on that when it comes to um, my report. All right, back to the minutes. Okay, so this should be to assign 
in value. Uh -huh. I'm doing is I'm putting a handy dandy highlighted letter, uh, yellow, on those to do items that I have been neglecting but need to tend to. Are you serious? 
serious? No, it takes yes. time. What, you know what yeah. browser? This happened to me What before. browser are you using? Actually, you might I, need to switch I'm browser. using Google Chrome. Google Chrome. Mine came up in an odd way and then I waited. Can you go to another tab and then come back to your tab and usually that? It straightens itself out. Uh, that brings me for. You can also just open in another browser and see if it works. It did translate what word to see to you. I can kind of figure out what it means. <laughs> but. Oh my god, it is in Greek. I'm not kidding you. I wasn't joking. Um, The idea is to be checking on this, you know, maybe one I time in between meetings. Makes sense. Um, well, what it reminds me, Molly and Mary, is we need to get back onto the retreat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So any, um, th so we're going to do this as a matter of course. So get comfortable. Bookmark this if you need to. You need to make a bookmark. Make it, you know, navigate there faster. Molly, I'm, al I'm also sending you, I cut and pasted your section. Oh, thanks. So Great. I'm sending it to you right now. Great, thank you. Um, all right. Okay, we didn't want to spend too much time on that, but um, I'm hoping that we can just establish this as a habit. All right, chair report. First of all, I apologize for um, not anticipating Labor Day and not getting the agenda out in time for us to have a meeting right after Labor Day. <laughs> There's too many Monday <laughs> Monday holidays in this country, and it always yeah. throws me off. But I, you'd think that I'd learn, but I'm getting there. Anyway, so um, I'm trying to think far back. It, the, at the last meeting, I know that you um, that. Rich and, and Jay and I were about to go meet the Forbes Library. Well, obviously that went well. They accepted our, our recommendations of Scarlet Oaks since then, and, and we followed on Marilyn's good suggestion of getting out in front of this publicly and having an educational um, opportunity for it. So I wrote that piece in the Gazette that was very well received, and I think it really helped Forbes um, manage the, um, the fallout of the hear, people hearing that the trees were going to come down. So that was all, all good. And then we actually had a hearing about it. And I can leave that for your report if you want. But um, bottom line is, is that it's all gone really well, except for the fact that we're losing five years. Um, is there a day schedule for that? No. Not yet. In progress. How was it longer? Almost a little longer than we could take it away. The library did express some desire in having something commemorative come out of the trees, even children's playing blocks, but hopefully something like stumps that could form a little play area. So they're talking about that. Um, I, I do want to address um, this letter just a little bit because I, uh, I did get a call from, from these individuals, and, and I let them know very clearly um, that is not the job of the commission to be involved in any particular um, issue around a particular tree, that we're actually an advisory board and that we are not empowered with that at all. That is solely the, the um, jurisdiction of the tree warden. But I did invite them to come to the meeting because anybody can at any, at any time come to a meeting and make public comment. They asked to be put on the agenda and I, um, I politely declined that request because that's not our jurisdiction to discuss individual, you know, to second guess or even have a conversation about whether a tree is a hazard tree or not. That's solely riches work. So, um, so that's that. Just a reminder that, you know, we, we, our work is very well defined under the charter. Um, okay, what else in the chair report? Rich and I are going to be making a presentation in front of the Tree Board Association next week. Yeah. At the Woodlawn Diner. 
And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've got. I, don't, I can't think of anything. So I'll turn to you, Rich. So as Lily mentioned, uh, I'll talk a little bit about Southern Iconic Street because it is in my jurisdiction. So um, historically speaking, um, these folks have asked to have this tree removed probably for the last seven years at different times. So they asked to have the tree removed prior to me being highway superintendent. I mean, uh, prior to me being a tree warden, we had no tree warden actually at the time. And we have responded to them by pruning the tree multiple times. Um, as my assessment of the tree is that it is in fair condition. It has a full canopy. Um, it does not have a lot of lower limbs because it was uh, limbed up because utility wires right next to it. Um, Davy Tree's assessment is, is that the tree is in fair health as well as it is in our inventory. Um, and the risk rating, or the sign risk rating as well. It's in all of Yes. So, with that said, um, Terry and I actually, the reason I took Terry with me because I have had uh, conversations in the past with these folks and I wanted to make sure there was someone else there that actually, you know, if I miss something that, you know, Terry would pick up on it or if they said something, at least it's not he said, she said, type of conversation. So we went there um, and the, they, were, they were polite, you know, they just asked, you know, would you like to have this tree removed? And I explained to them the process. It's a healthy public shade tree. I just can't solely just come and cut it down. It's, you know, my job as a tree warden is to uphold MGL Chapter 87. Um, and then they complained about the root that's mentioned in the letter that goes into their basement. Well, the root actually doesn't go into their basement. There's a root that I believe could be from that tree or another Norway maple that is adjacent to that tree. It's hard to say. Um, and I, it's a surface root, so I actually cut the root because it's they mowed over, I believe, with the lawnmower multiple times, and the root really is very, it's, has some life wood in it, maybe about 20%. So I cut it, and I said that you know, the root is not, in my opinion, not pressing against your foundation. It's only about this big. It's not, it's not very, not very about this big. It's not that big. So, and I explained to them the process, and I said that I'll follow up with the letter and the forms that you fill out, the form for a public change right here. Unfortunately, um, I guess the way that I explained it, it didn't make myself clear enough, so they ended up actually contacting Ryan O'Connell, who was uh, the uh, Council at Large and, and William Dwight. And so I received an email from him. I followed up with the same scenario that I did. And then I ended up uh, going over there today and dropping off by hand the forms and the letter for them, which I don't know if they received them. They, they wrote that letter obviously five days ago, but I don't know. They saw the letter I stopped at the door. I did have Terry call all of them. So I think it's really just their um, their frustration in general with the fact that they wanted this tree removed. There was another tree that was in front of their house that was removed many years ago that was rotted. Um, as you know, Nora may have a tendency to become brittle as they get older. But this tree is in, it had one leader on it when I came here that we cut off that actually was had a lot of tip tie back. So there's probably a small hole about this big in the actual where the, where the cut is. And because of the type of cut that it was, never with the, not capable of sealing over. So the tree just kind of compartmentalized it. But the rock only goes down about this far. And there are no, it's not hollow that I can tell. And there are no, there's no frass on the ground. So I don't believe there's the ants that are there are regular sand ants. So they're not mm -hmm. carpenter ants. Is there any reason because it is a Norway maple that would need to go in the direction of the I also explained um, the process of requesting the tree removed um, in great detail. Um, and so I feel like uh, they have they have all the information and all the power they need. I explained how if, if you know, they're not satisfied with the assessment of Richard Parcel the tree warden, then it, it becomes a decision of the mayor. So there is an appeal process. Um, so I let them, I just reminded them that, that, that these structures are in place to both protect the public and to protect our infrastructure. And um, I wouldn't say they were satisfied, but I, I do feel like we have provided them with all the knowledge to go through the, 
the process as any anyone has the right to. I also mentioned to them about planning a couple of small underwire trees because it would be good location for underwire trees, but I don't want the trees. Very clearly defined. So that would be like I explained to them the mitigation. I said you you have to mitigate for the loss of this because it is a healthy tree. If it was a hazard, then I can say the tree has to be removed. There's no public shade tree or anything going to cut it down. But I can't in good conscience say that it is a hazard. I wouldn't be doing my due diligence as an arborist to say that it's a hazard. If I thought it was an imminent threat to fall in our house, I would be more than happy to cut it down. It's not it's not the way that I work. So uh, I think it's just a lot I think it like really it's a lot of what he said. I think it's really frustrating with the process and I think it's just a lack of understanding. So I will continue to have dialogue with them if they want to pursue this. I'm not in any way, shape or form gonna stop having dialogue. So it's, uh, let's see, Forbes Library, just a quick update. Lily kind of updated you. We did have a public shade tree hearing on the 12th, which was uh, successful. There were, there were uh, no one that protested the removal. Uh, there was one person that sent me an email at 8.15 that night, uh, and I responded to them with the, with the reasoning why they were being removed, and then Lily responded later on with actually a link to uh, the op-ed piece. So those folks, person, I should say, was satisfied with the fact that we did do our due diligence and that we went through the process of work and are going to replant trees. So I think this is, was a really great exercise in how, uh, you know, because we had a plan, because there was uh, a lot of public input, um, we actually were successful because this really could have turned into something that could have been very divisive and difficult, which it has not. And this, the sonic uh, tomography that I had done actually uh, confirmed my diagnosis that the trees do have, some of them have severe uh, decay, insipid decay inside of them. So the one tree that I, th that I think will have some salvageable wood will be the largest tree of all, which is the one that's uh, about 110 feet tall on the west lawn. So that one will be salvageable. Unfortunately, that one, that canopy on that tree is just totally died back. So that one does not have a, uh, a lot of rot in it, but the other ones have a lot of rot. So, uh, and actually, the sonic tomography actually was uh, it was a little pricey, but I think it was well worth it. And we're going to have the other trees done next spring. Mm -hmm. uh, mass extension. Oh. Yeah, 500 bucks a tree. But I mean, they were, you know, this is what I ended up with. And I don't think you've seen this all past this or not, but this is I think Todd got one for the uh, Silver Maker in the courthouse, but this was basically what uh, the, uh, the uh, Nick Brzee put together. Uh, you suggested that the people on Clement Street, that, that would be an option if they wanted to get a sonic uh, tomography of the tree to prove suppose, their case that it's got rise. Yeah, I, I suppose they could, but I think they're just, uh, Get, I think they're just going to be resistant to. They won't want to do it. No, they, they yeah. just want the tree gone and they want it done for them. I mean, I understand the frustration. I'm not saying that I don't, but I'm also, I wouldn't be, I, I would be negligent as a tree warden if I said, sure, we're just going to cut it down because then I'd be out of a job. Well, we had a lot of other clues with Forbes, Forbes Library that those trees were in decline, and Rich is not seeing any of those clues. No. Yeah. No, I mean, if, if, you know, Norway maples obviously are. They're, 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 they're brittle trees, and if they're not pruned when they're young, they grow very poorly. This tree seems to have withstood a lot of pruning and seems to be uh, pretty healthy, mm -hmm. considering what's been done to it and the amount of canopy that's been taken out of it. So, you know, next year could be a different story. If you get a resilient won't that would be the end of it. It would die very quickly. But, I, you know, it's, right now it's healthy, and I can't, in good conscience, agree with it. You know, trees and forbs are very different. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, we're in a beta, so this is about TreeKeeper, TreeKeeper 7, which was our database that we've been using for our tree inventory. Um, we actually are in a beta testing for TreeKeeper 8. Um, 
which has been, in my opinion, very successful. It's basically what they did is if you're familiar with My Tree Keeper, which is what all of you can see on the web, they basically took My Tree Keeper, they took Mobile Tree Keeper, which is the app that I have to go in the field, and they took the Tree Keeper 7, which is the desktop model, and they just kind of pushed them all together to make it one very usable, very user-friendly platform. Um, and they took out all the stuff that was quirky <coughs> and strange. So everything's based on, uh, they took basically our parcel uh, overlay and they actually put it right on top of the map. Instead of using, uh, instead of using their GIS, so we provided them with the GIS layer, but they have their own GIS system. They actually got rid of that and they just took our layer somehow and bent it over a Google map, which is really very cool. Uh, and I've had really little, very little issues. Um, the speed is much better because you know we're, we're working off someone else's server out in the middle of this country. Um, uh, connectivity has been great, having a knocked offline, uh, easy to use. So it's been it's pretty it's pretty good. It's like again, it's just we were one of the communities because I reached out to them and asked them if we could actually be one of the communities. Good. Yeah, the tree, the tree keeper that we're using, I mean, uh, yes, yeah. will go away. And you will actually have this, which will be tree keeper 8, will be actually viewable. There will be a link on our uh, web page so people can open it and then people that have administrative rights can um, open it and actually enter all the data, remove data that it needs to be done. So, but it's a, it's a lot more interactive. For, for my, my end of it anyways, especially for making work orders, because the old system was very clunky, um, and it didn't always, so for example, if you're working in the desktop model, it wouldn't necessarily register when you actually made some edits to it immediately. This registers immediately. Um, so it's big, it's a huge improvement. Uh, and we have our, our license is good until uh, April. I don't know where the city's uh, missing, which is their new work order system, which also is going to be similar to something like this one. Well. I don't know where that's at. So it's part of the marriage creek. Doing a lot of uh, tree building, just doing a lot of tree plantings with everyone, just, you know, tree trimming, tree removals. Um, I'm just waiting for a date for National Grid of Action. Get a bunch of work together where they need to bring more than that. All right. Well, I don't know if you all noticed the agenda, but it's a time gap. It says that the universe has granted us a bonus 15 minutes because there's a gap of 15 minutes between 435 and 450. Oh. Should we do? There's another one between Which means that CJ, if if you didn't want to stay for this whole meeting, we could we could take you now and then you could be on your way. If, if you know, if it wasn't your in your <laughs> your world plan to stay until six o'clock. Well, I would really appreciate that. Yeah. If my <laughs> two four leggeds up in Chesterfield who uh, will wait await my arrival back. Okay. Okay. Then let's go ahead and hear from you. Well, I'm from the Conway School, and we do real projects for real clients, mainly local communities. And I don't know if your commission has worked with the school in the past. Not our commission. I have worked with, with you guys in the past, because I was part of Grow Food Northampton. So you all, both you did a food security project with, with us in the city of Northampton and one other group, I can't remember. And then um, the Bean Allard project, you guys helped create a proposed design for how to use that way. And others so of us are cool. familiar with Maryland with Conway. Oh, Brad. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, oh you're not. Uh, Antioch. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm I know about it, though. I was so you're, there, so you're yeah. staff faculty? Yes. Okay. Yes. I am currently helping recruit projects for the school for the students to do for the winter and spring terms. So winter projects are usually planning kind of projects, long-term strategies. Sometimes they're used to kind of jumpstart a community about a particular issue because one of the Conway standards is 
two community meetings where we gather input uh, for our clients, uh, which can be uh, quite useful because sometimes people are willing to talk to graduate students before they're willing to talk to their own elected officials. So we found that helpful. Uh, there's lots of projects uh, that we're recruiting for right now, but there's actually three uh, towns or cities that are considering this tree preservation and planting strategy that uh, we would like to propose with Ridge to build on the tree inventory data that you already have. So what's a tree preservation and planting strategy? Well, I just kind of put that name together. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, trees 2020, I've been seeing t-shirts about, you know, 2020 is clear vision, and as a planner who does long-term visioning stuff, I like that, um, that kind of long-term looking at things, but Three years it's away. not so long-term anymore. I know, it's not, is it? Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, so how would, how would a Conway project maybe support what you all are, are, are doing? Uh, Rich and I had a phone call about that, and um, we would love to support what you're doing to help make recommendations for ordinance updates, if you're at that point. I'm sure there's more research and talking that, that, that I need to learn more about, so you know, cool. what you're already doing. Woo! <laughs> I've been working on one, so okay. by all means. Okay, so yeah. uh, that's what I'm saying. We need to know what you all are already doing. Uh, but this project uh, could be envisioned to take the tree inventory data and do some spatial analysis. Now, Rich and I haven't flushed this out yet, but you know, like, where are most of the red maples and where are the oaks and you know, what percentage of species distribution do we have? And I don't know how much of that is coming with the software or if that stuff the students could do, uh, but that's certainly appropriate. Uh, we could talk about a tree canopy goal. I've worked in the communities both uh, west of the Potomac River in Virginia and east of the Potomac River in Maryland. And all the communities I've worked with, I've recommended that you have a canopy goal. So to figure out your canopy goal, you have to figure out where you are in canopy coverage. So that's in theory, it's 12 noon, what, what would shadow would be on the ground and you measure that. And that's fairly easy to do with um, current mapping systems. Uh, so that's something that could be part of this. So you see where you are and then you say, okay, well, we want to set a goal of X. It could be the community I worked with in Maryland. We just set a no net loss goal. Well, this is uh, 500 square miles and a million people. And they said 52% we're going to set a no net loss goal. So those are the kinds of significant things to address climate adaptation, for one thing. Uh, and, and one of the other things that they uh, talked about was reducing impervious surfaces. So anything that, that sheds water, you can reduce those surfaces and set goals around that. Uh, so uh, we could certainly analyze case studies there's a bunch of really good tree ordinances out there for communities uh, similar to yours. Um, the bigger ones include Fairfax County, Virginia, Atlanta, Georgia, and Prince George's County, where I'm from, uh, has a good tree ordinance as well. So uh, there's case studies out there that you know we can help coach the, stu the students through analyzing you know what are best practices and what kinds of things could be brought to light for your analysis in, in looking at your ordinance. Uh, this wouldn't be the kind of thing where they would sit down and write chapter and verse and you know this is how the ordinance should be structured. But it would get public input, uh, public support, if you will, uh, for moving the ball forward on uh, having a tree ordinance. Um, it sounds like something that Rich was supportive of to you know get an ordinance update going. Uh, the, the nice thing, as I said, about working with graduate students is that sometimes we can get people to open up a little more, you know, really tell us what kinds of things you're interested in. Uh, and we do two public meetings as part of that. So uh, whenever you're going into trying to write ordinances, you need that momentum from this is what the public, public said they wanted. 
and you know trying to look at what those issues are. Um, and then they would also include recommendations with regard to uh, policies, strategies, moving forward, uh, and also have a, we call it a geospatial component, some kind of mapping component that the students, you know, get their feet wet using the uh, geographic information system mapping. Uh, I could see that as a simple uh, map of tree canopy coverage uh, for Northampton, map of impervious surfaces, and you know, setting goals for those two. Those could be some simple outcomes. What the outcomes are is up to you all working with the students and certainly with the public input. So uh, that's all worked out with the students and whoever ends up being on the project team. Uh, the timing works out to we need to have a signed agreement by Thanksgiving or so. So by that time we're, you know, we're needing to shorten our list and it is a competitive process for these uh, plans. So uh, we try to give the faculty the list at the beginning of November and then it's a competitive process um, to go through that. I know that the students are interested in doing this kind of project. It is, uh, I wouldn't call it cutting edge, but it's on the edge of cutting edge, is uh, doing uh, these kinds of analyses to uh, put forward the value of trees. Uh, this is a study that we did. Uh, I love being the beta. We were the beta in the Maryland area. It was great. Uh, we're an 80% community of color, so you know we were always looking at capacity building grants and those kind of things. And this was a study that um, um, the U.S. Forest Service did with us using iTree when it first came out a few years ago uh, to look at the value of forest and tree canopy. So as I said, our county uh, just, you can, you can see there's Washington, D.C. cut out of our county. So we're just east of Washington, D.C. So we're about 500 square miles and a million people. Those are rounded figures. And we have 52% forest and tree canopy. Okay, 52%. About a third of our county is completely rural on uh, private water and, and sewer. So we have a big opportunity there. About 60% of that area is forested. So it's an urban community that is looking at climate change and how are we going to deal with uh, the heat island effect and all those things. So we said, okay, we've got this 52% forest and tree canopy coverage. Convert that to dollars for me. As I said, I've served my, my term in local government for 30 years. I worked 15 years in Virginia and 15 in, in Maryland. And I was always trying to convince people to do the right thing with regard to the environment. And we could never do it because we couldn't put a dollar value on it. Well, now we have the software that does that. So in this study, I've never seen the planning board pay attention as much as they did when I presented the study to them. The forest and tree canopy coverage for over that 500 square miles, so it's about 250 square miles of forest and tree canopy coverage, provides 12.8 billion dollars with a B in stormwater services every year. Every year. So if we didn't have that forest and tree canopy, we would have to pony up 12.8 billion dollars a year in stormwater infrastructure. So it starts to put it into elected officials' minds that this has value, because it does, in reducing stormwater costs and reducing runoff and all this. 21 million in air quality benefits, mostly in reduced healthcare costs, okay? So um, I found this, I was just unpacking. So reduced temperatures equal reduced power plant emissions, right? Less air conditioners running and all that. And when you add that to uh, more trees and more pollutant uptake, so there's more pollutant uptake <coughs> and lower emissions, both of those result in better health benefits. So that's kind of how this is calculated. So these are, uh, what do I want to say, reliable sources, defensible math, if you will, 
uh, and these kinds of, I'm not promising this kind of study for Northampton, but this is the kind of case studies that are out there now that we can point to and say, the trees have value, these are the kind of values they have. Um, the one in particular that we might be able to do something similar for Northampton, and you don't even have to know what that map is or what those colors mean, do you? The red is hotter, the yellow is cooler. So these are communities with lower percentages of tree canopy. Guess what? Those are the communities of higher percentage of people of color. So this is a social justice issue that we're seeking to, they are, I should say, not we anymore. I retired and moved up here, and happy to be so. Uh, but now they're trying to address this, um, I call it under canopy communities. You know, we talk about underserved communities, we have under canopy communities. So perhaps in Northampton you could look at, it, it can be sliced and diced any different way, watershed. This is, and this happens to be by census block group because it was the easiest measure geography wise that we use. So that's my pitch. I think a, a strategy is always good to have as you're moving into trying to write legislation because it can be less specific. And you can get people to agree on, you know, whether you say, you know, we're, we're a no net loss percentage, that's a, that's a goal. Um, and the strategies to meet that are, uh, we're gonna make sure that Rich has the resources that he needs and we're gonna target communities with lower canopy for planting trees. Because now you're just planting trees as opportunities exist. What's the planting strategy? Are you gonna look at species that are better adapted to the climate? That's a big part of, and also vegetation changes with wildlife. And the students would love to have a climate adaptation component because that's something that the school really believes in too. And certainly the economic issues related to uh, maples, that's something that is really on people's minds since uh, maple tapping and all that is uh, an economic engine. So, all right, so I'll uh, leave that with you. Um, and I'll leave you in Rich's capable hands. And uh, we'll just keep talking. Uh, he and I are kind of at the stage where we need to put a scope together and start talking more specifically. Um, I, I didn't talk about the cost, but I will mention that there is a project fee to cover um, the school's cost of $7,000 for this project. And since you're local, there's no travel fees which you can charge for and just the communities. Um, clearly Northampton is a community that we want to work with uh, uh, at the school and we'd be happy to answer any questions or as things come up. Do you have any initial uh, reactions, questions, thoughts? Are you calling the project and how many students are being involved? Uh, I just called it, for lack of a better title, Tree Preservation and Planting Strategy. Um, I wouldn't use the word plan just because that's probably a little more than this is going to be because this is more strategic. And uh, it would be two students usually would work on a, a project of this okay. size. And they would, would they be brand new students? Uh, not new to the Conway School, certainly. No. Uh, they're graduate students. Right, so would they be, is it a one-year program? It's a one-year program. Uh, so at they, this point, they would have finished their fall semester. So they've already gotten their feet wet by the time they get to the winter semester. Mm -hmm. And uh, the really cool thing this year is that uh, more than half of our students are, I would call them life changers. They were in some other profession and they're you know, related profession and uh, a couple of them were teachers uh, related to the environment, but um, so it's been exciting to, to bring them okay. forward. Okay, and um, so I have, I have two basic questions. One is that, have you ever done something just like this before? And if you have, can you please show us an example? The school has not done a project okay. like this. Okay. Um, I've done two projects in my professional career uh, similar to this. Right. I can point you absolutely to the most recent uh, version that was just finished, where there's a tree canopy strategy within uh, this document that's very similar to, you know, what I would recommend 
um, for your community. And would you Same be the kind one? Of studies. Would you be the one overseeing their work? Would it be you particularly? Uh, not me in particular. There's a uh, planning faculty. Um, I'm certainly going to be consulting on these projects, uh, especially if there's going to be three. Um, I'm a certified arborist. I'm probably one of the longest serving certified arborists in the United States. My, cert my certification number is 13. So uh, I'm very <laughs> proud of, of that. Uh, it's in the mid-Atlantic that it's 13. But, um, so yes, I will be part of uh, helping to oversee this. And the, they have professional faculty that, that follow along the way. Because I think having, I mean, for me, a hesitation is not having that level of professional input in this particular field. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have worked with, with Conway before and two other projects, so I'm familiar with, there's a little bit of a, a gap there, a knowledge gap, mm -hmm. that uh, the students are racing to, to fill in, and they're very motivated, and, right. and they're fast learners, but it's just there. And so that's a concern of mine, is just that we're, we would need to have that sort of expert support for this to come up, to have the out, kind of outcome that I think the level of professionalism that we would want. At least that's that's my personal opinion. And then the other thing that you mentioned is just so you know, a lot of the, the analysis that you described that um, you would want to see in a document like this, we've been thinking about all the time. Because iTree offers a lot of that sort of analysis. You can do census block overlay. Um, you know, we definitely uh, my tree keeper offers a lot of um, uh, aggregate, you know, benefit analysis of you know various areas of, of the tree's benefits. So we definitely are looking at that sort of thing. So that wouldn't necessarily be a new thing, but it would certainly be the first time when we're going. Okay, we're going to get get down to brass tacks and really um, move from you know brainstorming what our high our our best strategies are to actually getting it down and then the other piece that I'm, I'm compelled by is the community conversation we did do a survey of the community and we had 400 respondents so we have a lot of information there um, but but we ha again that was before the inventory so doing something after the inventory would be um, would be helpful and that would be the good, that would be a good uh, kind of hook to get people to come in is to say, hey, we did this inventory, isn't this cool? And the you know students could do maybe the first reporting out of the inventory. You know, we have 473 oak trees, and you know whatever. However, we should talk about how that data can be sliced and diced, and you know that's a way to uh, kind of get the community involved and you know how how to bring for things forward. Um, the way I would suggest that we work on your concerns is to have a really clear scope of work. Mm -hmm. And we have some time because it's only mid-September, mid to late September. So we have like the month of October and even a little bit at the beginning of November to kind of massage through a scope of work. Maybe even start writing the outline of what the document would be. The cool thing is that we have two other communities that are doing very similar, hopefully, fingers crossed, projects. If that does happen, we will have the shared benefit of mutual research. <laughs> that we'll have more students doing research on the same kinds of topics. So um, we're trying for a little cross-fertilization there. What are the other terms? Uh, I'd rather not say, just because we, uh, yeah. They're still trying to figure out what their uh, financing is and all that. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think there's uh, certainly opportunity there. I think we need to get a good solid scope so that expectations on both sides are clear, um, and you know, take it forward from there. All so. right. Well, thank you for coming. Oh, okay, and then and then we're gonna have to wrap it up in three yes. minutes. Um, well, what intrigues me is the geospatial nature, but on a pretty uh, granular level, okay. not, not kind of yeah. broad. Um, because where I think we run into uh, at least a challenge from what I see is uh, the different priorities, um, depending on what plan you read, of trees and their role in um, contributing to a, uh, a sustainable uh, city. So we have our priorities as a tree commission that are related to the inventory that we've done. 
And then as a city, we also have a bike ped plan, which doesn't speak to that, our priorities at all. And then you have a climate adaptation plan or whatever they worked on last year that doesn't really talk to the other two plans. Then you have traffic calming plan, which doesn't really talk to the other two plans. And then we have the DPW and their kind of infrastructure priorities, which doesn't necessarily talk. So we have a lot of different cross prioritizations okay. and they don't speak to each other. And I think we're in a unique position, uh, possibly through this, to have the students do a deep dive on those plans and come up with a common prioritization process that we can use to really pinpoint where we focus our work and then how we incorporate trees to accomplish the social goods that are inherited with those other plans. Um, but if, if someone doesn't pull all that together, uh, it's not gonna get done and we'll just continue to kind of wrestle with each other. But I'd like to, I see this as a way to kind of smooth off some potential conflict and find some commonality among these otherwise separate plans that the city has commissioned. That's excellent background and that's exactly what we need to put into the scope. Is that if these are the the background documents of those that work that they should uh, reflect. Um, I just wrote down what planners always do is a SWOT analysis strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Maybe that's something they can do with those previous plans and documents and just say, you know, one of the weaknesses of this document is it doesn't talk about trees where it supports climate adaptation and it could, they could make some recommendations. Is that what, you, what you're thinking about there? Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, at a base level and then taking, taking the priorities and kind of uh, finding areas specific areas within the city where those priorities sync up and uh, then we could target those for planting for the next, you know, having a 10 year different scenario. Mm, okay. Um, okay. You know, I feel like this, this might be a conversation we could continue um, the next time we meet. I don't know, I, I, I guess we'd have to speak to Rich whether you're feeling like this is a, an exploratory conversation or are you farther, farther along with that? No, I'm not far along on that. Okay. I think it's also going to really go depend upon funding. Okay. Because uh, this funding will most likely have to come out of the Department of Public Works budget because it was not an earmarked project. Yeah. So that would be a whole other conversation you have to have with the man in the White House. Okay. We can use the, uh, the earmarked money for trees. You know You could. I suggest you look at the Healthy Hampshire grant that Wayne has. Healthy Hampshire grant. All right. Well, I would like to, I would like to put this on. Uh, I would like to put this on the agenda of, another, of a future meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay, because I feel like there's more discussion to be had here. I, I certainly still have some thoughts and questions, um, and we'd just like to put you know some feelings out. Yeah, just let me know. Okay. Day, I'd be happy to come back Great. Later, later Do you have the contact information we can give that from I, I, I have it all. I'm just forwarding to you. Great. Thank so you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate it. I yeah. Did, did, did my time, as I like to say, <laughs> many a tree commission. <laughs> so uh, thank you all yeah. for the work that you do, too, because I know it's volunteer time. And what is your particular title at the school? Um, adjunct faculty. And I've also taught at George Washington University in their Sustainable Landscapes program and their Landscape Design program. Actually, I still teach there because we're doing so much online now that I can teach from Massachusetts, which is really great. Nice. So, all right. Well, nice yeah. to meet you. Great. Yeah. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for your Thank time. You. I hope we get to work together. Thanks. That's right. You know what? That was going to be on my chair report. Oh. I forgot to mention. Well, can I just all say? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm enrolled in a class teaching English as a second language. It means Mondays and Wednesday nights in Northampton, starting at 4:30. Oh. So I've cut kind of half a little off of that and a little off of this. It goes through December 3rd or 6th or something like that. So unfortunately, I have to leave early from the next. Week. Six meetings here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Molly gave me a heads up on this, and I, um, I meant to share it with you all that, that for six meetings she's going to be able to attend the first half of it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the first two thirds, because we want to get out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Molly. Thank you, Molly.
Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, 20 feet of the public right of way. So outside of so outside of the right of way, two up to 20 feet. They are protected. They are supposed. I to I feel like this is this is such a big deal that we almost need to notify folks who we gave a wrong impression to, you know, on whose property we planted trees, and let them know that this is. This is the latest, this is the interpretation of the city solicitor. I mean, do, do other people agree or am I just creating work and worry for us? Can we easily get a list of those? Yes, you know, I feel that we, to just go to them and say, oh, you know, we give you the one impression now, it's the same tree and you know, therefore can't come in and move it or anything for activity. Um, I would like to soften that somehow. I, I don't feel that, I don't think it's there. I mean, I think that, um, you know, we somehow have to take some responsibility for having this way. I feel this way. I, I think what I should do is let's wait till Alan T. Wall rewrites the language and I'll have that conversation with him. I would and love that. That's see what he fun. has to say about trees that have already been previously planted under this state statute and how we would go about either uh, notifying folks or let's see the dogs alive. And that's Mass General Law? That's correct. You said? That's correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, very least we could notify people and say, look, we, we misinterpreted the, the, the rules that the tree actually um, comes to city tree good if you want us to move it um, somewhere else. Take it away. We're fully Hi, David. Well, no Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for your great work on the Forbes thing, too, by the way. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. So sad, but a new beginning. Yeah. That's right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, moving them is not that hard because um, the, the trees that I, I planted before the city, they're the ones that are part of the way we're The city hasn't planted that many trees that have grown very much. And most people presumably will say, no, it's okay because we'd like to let the city's then responsible for the right. Right. So what was well, we the could, difference? we could give that happy lining to the whole thing. Oh, when, yeah. We, you know, when we message it, we could definitely say, the good news is, yeah, you're, um, you're what's, what's the, um, what, what do they lose? Because they weren't allowed to move them any, right? So, so, so what is a homeowner? They, they lose, they're not even allowed to go out in their yard and the tree. Without, they, they have to get permission. Right. So it's, treat, it's treated just like a public shade tree. So if you mm -hmm. want to trim the shade tree in front of your house, you have to call the tree board and get it. So forward. young train to tree training yeah. is the issue. Well, even, even then when it's older, yeah. young yeah. or older, you have to get permission and presumably hire licensed arborists. I mean, so I mean, I personally would find that to be harsh. Or you mm -hmm. might put in a tree board call and the city that's really illegal. If, it's a, if it is a city tree, that's the city's responsibility to maintain. Then it seems to me that setbacks tree, setback trees must go on my tree keeper. I agree with you, and I'm just going to have a different category. Mm -hmm. Just a setback. Mm -hmm. so, um, and I think for the time being, what we should do, and Rob and I have already talked about this, is not, we're not actively pursuing setback planning. We should probably hold off mm -hmm. on any more setback agreements with anyone until we have the proper Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. So I mean, it's just it's a little fly in the ointment, but I don't well, think it yeah. can be. You know, it's not earth shadowing. It's not going to stop the setback planning program. There, I think the setback planning program is actually really helpful in a lot of places where there mm -hmm. there is absolutely no other place to plant trees in the actual right mm -hmm. So, but it, it also makes sense and lays a better foundation for any uh, Northampton public shade tree. Ordinance, because they were going to get grabbed it by and during that process. Anyway. That, that that's correct, and that actually brings me to another point. So part of part of the this is not really part of this discussion, but just an example is that part of uh, what you had drafted was any trees that were in 15 feet of the right way would have this protection. Well, if we drafted that ordinance and it flew, these trees would be protected. The trees that were there that were pre-existing would not be. Because you just cannot go up to a tree because you have this ordinance and say now this is a public shade tree. When actually, in reality, it was never a public shade tree to begin with because it wasn't planted under NGL Chapter 
it's uh, so we, if we wanted to make it a public shade tree, actually, the city would actually have to pay the residents for the tree. This was his interpretation. This was his interpretation. You mean they can't be grandfathered in? No. no. Unless, it, it's un not unle unless it's tied to some kind of, uh, like a site plan approval or something of that, where there is actually uh, regulations that already exist in place. So that's a whole other discussion. He wants anything that we decide to draft, he'd like to see, so which, which would be good. But he wants to get through the setback plan piece first. So, all right, getting us back to sorry. our agenda items. Yeah. Well, so I, I did two cut 104 trees today. Okay. Um, so, going back to that, um, I do not like to be uh, the the regular nag about something if it's not within your um, capability to provide us something in, you know in the time of the after. So with regard to seeing where these trees are on a map, which is what I would like to do because it's that zoomed out big picture thing that I you know that I think is helpful for us for us all in terms of planning and prepping for the next year. Is there a time of the year, in looking at the big picture, and looking at this, you know, your, your, the cycle of your workload throughout the year, is there a time of year when you think you will regularly be able to catch up on um, putting in all the data for trees when you could then provide a regular presentation to the tree commission on where, where trees have been planted like the previous year? Like is winter a similar time when you think you might- It depends. depends. Literally, it depends. Depends. We have a bad winter and it snows. Yeah, forget it. You know, and, and All right. We need an intern. We do a, a, we do a list of our Yeah, yeah I know. We, it's we just have, different. I want to see them on that. We have a list, and it's just as easy to actually put them to dry right to the tree with the tablet with the information on it. If you this one. Yeah. And there's no guessing. Like, if he gives me, Rob gives me a list, which he has, which is great. I can do it from my office, but I have to physically remember where the tree is planted because in the field, the tree gets changed and they move five feet. I don't think so, I'm interested in five feet. That's no, but I, I know you're interested in five feet, but to enter it correctly, mm -hmm. to get the coordinates yeah. right, um, you physically have to go to, that's why when they do the inventory, they walk around and they well, stand in front of the tree. Yes, and they can have the data. they geolocate it that way and then send you the coordinates on a list? You could, but then it's just another extra step that I have to enter information. So it sure beats going out to the actual location. Believe me, I like to go out. <laughs> 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 so I did. I did the majority of the trees on South Street are entered. I just have not done um, the trees that we have planted since then. They are all listed. What do you think is a reasonable time to get this? Probably. Well, I guess if we're going to be planting trees on a calendar basis, probably would be good to do it for have a report saying this is where we planted these XYZ trees on these dates and these little and, and early enough in the winter so that when we're planning for the next year, you will have that information. So do you think you're going to have that information, say, by late December? I mean, I, if, I, if I can do it, I have to do it. So it's just a so. But that data would be for not, so it's December 2017, that date is not really, uh, as far as getting the nursery stock you want, it needs, it, it's not great for 2018, it would be good for 2019. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, that, that because, I mean, we because can, we're always going to be behind the eight ball, because I, of the yes. way the... But I the thought January mission. actually is a good time to be ordering trees for that year. As long as, long as it's the long as the stock is because when the stock overwinters, the stock can actually die. So every nursery is not necessarily going to know exactly what they have for sale in March, yeah. it, uh, especially in New England. Mm -hmm. So we have 30 trees this year that are really important to our about 30 trees to our plant environment, which weren't worth big enough. I think the last two, the, the last summer was. The stock this year was, was a little difficult. I see. Okay. So the idea would be to be a year ahead? Well, I mean, I think the idea would be to actually have the presentation. This is what 
we, this is where we plan it this year, and then the commission at that point is in the process of deciding what their planting priorities are for the following calendar year. So you decide on a planting priority, and then that basically says that we're going to plant like 100 trees on Mount Tuck Street. So then we have to go and find the stock at multiple nurseries to fit that bill based upon what you want. But you'll, you'll be able to see what we've done so far. Mm -hmm. We've done South Street. We've done. Uh, we finished Maynard Road. Maynard Road is completely you now full of trees at this point. You know things of that nature. You know these little places that we didn't finish the year before. That way, there at the end of this season, this planting season, the goal is is to have the majority of the nursery empty, and any of the trees that we can't get from Amherst Nursery because of what Rob was just talking about, because there's issues like uh, the uh, little leaf lindens, we're, we're going to have to figure out a way to get some other ones because the lindens at Port uh, Amherst uh, are not are not are not ready to be dug. They won't be ready until the fall until the spring. So that part of that project will have to end in the spring. But we'll have we'll supplement other places where we have setback plans when we owe people things. So the goal is to really at the end of November or the beginning of December when the ground's frozen and say that's it, we'll stop, we're done, everything's cleaned out, we're planted. Here's what we did this year. In January and ladies and gentlemen, what would you like to do this morning? Okay, so let's let's put it on our yearly calendar if we have one, have such a thing. At the the last you know the last meeting we had in December, you gave us a true blue thorough with map <laughs> um, report of all of the trees going to be planted. Yeah, and a Santa costume. For one more thought out there, like, instead of saying like this is the priority. You guys have a little list of priority places so that we can then match our capacity to the place. That was even if it's only free. So this South Street, we're, we're kind of lucky that we actually got the stock for South Street, but we might not have had that. So we might have said South Street and then we stock it. And, but if we had like a couple options, well, I'd love for us to you know get more than one year ahead of ourselves, so that so that we have more we have flexibility for a full three years. Yeah. Then we can then we can do that sort of thing you're talking about, which yeah. is this, let the stock fit this street, if not this street. We know that they're both in our three-year range. Right. That, that, that's really important because this is like yes. South Street was, you know, those were underwater. But it was rigid. I agree. Yeah. And then, but if we could have said we could plant King Street or South Street. Yes. King Street's all not underwater trees for the most part that we're going to be interested in. We've got 10 or 20 different places. And so then we see what we can get. Now, I've just found Getting stock to be incredibly difficult because, to John's credit, he allows us to reject a lot of trees. And so when I actually get there, even though we said we can use the trees we want, when we get there, I say, but actually, you know, they don't look, they don't look like they, I, I don't want them. He doesn't go, oh, no, you, you say you mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's very easy to work with. So, yeah. You know, but yeah. We, have, we have a bona fide contract with them, so. He's bound by the contract to give us the nursery stock at that cost. Now we can make substitutions with him. Other nurseries would say, "Sorry, you're SOL," and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. So he's been really good. But I mean, he's had a lot of experience working in this valley in the state. Mm -hmm. so, and, and there's a great line because Susan here came, Susan Roy came with me, and we looked at the trees, and she felt that they were possibly okay. I mean, it wasn't like they were. Remember the ones in the upper field? But I. But, but John went out there and looked at them and he kind of felt they weren't, he didn't really want us to dig them up. And so I give him credit for that instead of just saying, yeah, I'm digging them here they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to move us along. So I think we do have a plan for, for having a review yearly and then, and then that just does motivate also us to think about longer term for our plan is. Okay, um, now we're moving on to this. Anyone has one of these? And Jen, you've already um, received my input. And Molly, did you get Molly's input? Yes, I, I got two people sent me, you know, pretty minor um, changes that um, I only, this is all I printed up. So this is, this is, you know, not the final, final thing. Um, so I got two people, I think I left it in my little bag, but I had two people who, um, responded and there was like you know typo and various uh one tree needs to be invoked for to from medium to large tree yeah and then i recommended yes. taking out 
any reference to nuts, edible or otherwise on this list? Well, oh yeah. The reason why I wouldn't have put those in to begin with, but we've had a lot of um, input from the public about edible, like that's been kind of, to me, a hot button issue with many of our public. They want, in certain neighborhoods, they want trees that produce food. Yeah. So that's why we, that's why we included it from the very beginning. Okay, so my feedback was, hold on a second. But my feedback was that the Vermont Guide provides a key on page, um, Yep, on page eight, mm -hmm. and if you look at limitations, number two, it says fruit and or leaves can be a litter problem. So there's that piece, and then it also pro provides the, the apple symbol for fruit, which includes nuts. Oh, it does include nuts? Uh -huh, it does include nuts. Okay. So it feels to me like that's already covered, and, okay. if, and if we are gonna put in specifically nuts and edible nuts, then we should, or non-edible, we should definitely say non-edible, we shouldn't say nuts and edible. But then we should put in fruit. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're just getting into du yeah, yeah, unnecessary yeah, yeah. duplication. So my re recommendation would be to just take that out of our little list and let people use the guide as the guide is meant to be used. So you're saying anywhere it says nuts or edible nuts, we should remove it from our yeah from from our those three things. So we're not changing our recommendation. We're just removing a notation. Removing a notation. Right. That shows a so does that work for everybody? Yeah. Okay. And then I think I had a few other comments. I mean, I can. Um, yeah, I did. I had the. I printed it out, and then um, it seems to have not gotten to my. Oh, this lit. These two emails I got. Okay. So okay, go ahead. So. Um, Sorry. That's okay. I, I'm trying to remember from memory. Um, I think I mentioned that. Mario, looking right now, you just proposed that I feel it would be worth at the beginning to have just a little blurb about our intention and purpose for this. What do you mean? I'd like to use the introduction, introduction statement? Or? Yeah. I mean, it's clear what it is, but why are we presenting this, and especially in the context of a changing climate? We, I, this iteration, yeah. I don't think that we drill down super far in the climate change arena. Because, yeah. Okay, I, I remember what comment I made. I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of feeling like we, we need to, like that would have been a great comment to receive, yeah. uh, you know, a month ago or six weeks ago, but at this point I kind of feel like it's time to execute. Mm -hmm. um, I have your, do you want? Yeah, you want sure, sure. You can roll I, I know one of them. One is that there are a couple places where you say mail only. And I, I think that, um, oh, it's the Amar Cork Tree, and maybe there was one other. Oh, uh, the um, Dinko. Yeah, 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 just move the mail only part into the notes section. And um, instead of under the common name, because mail only has nothing to do with its common name. So page four. Yep, the Amar oak tree, uh, cork tree. Just put mail only in col the column that says notes. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and and then and then my and then it, that made me think of ginkgo. Mm -hmm. And ginkgo wouldn't we also want mail only? Yeah, I don't even think they sell females anymore. But oh, okay. But well, saying it would help. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. 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 people. Uh, so the, so ginkgo should be. Yeah, so just put that under the notes yep. column again. Yeah. Okay. Speaking to Marilyn's concern about climate, if you look at the Vermont Tree Guide, look at any particular species, if you see drought, um, air pollution, hmm. those speak to climate change. You can choose trees that 
can withstand the conditions that climate change might be produced. That's true, and it also does have a hardiness mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. key mm -hmm. for zones. There is, there are some studies, particularly there's one at the Chicago Botanical Garden that is ongoing, that they are, they have these models that they're um, using to predict which trees are gonna be better survivors and which aren't. And what I would say is as, you know, the next iteration of this, certainly we could spend time like looking at that and there may be some trees, like I can give you, um, this one's in here, but you know, 10 years ago we weren't planting, or 15 years ago we weren't planting um, sweet gums, you know? And now that's a recommended tree, you know? So, 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 so we as a program have made great adaptation. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just money. implicit. Yeah, excellent. no, I appreciate what you're saying, right. yeah. and I think there's more work to do in that department as right. these studies in the Chicago Botanical Garden model models are being fleshed out, they're going to come up with a list of use these, scrap the don't keep planting this. You know what I mean? It's just not finished. I yeah. think the only thing that I can vote in the garden, and it's hard to extrapolate, it's mm -hmm. got to do with maximum temperatures. Mm -hmm. Basically, excuse me, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's duration. Mm -hmm. So I've actually printed out charts of their temperatures, our temperatures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so some really, someone may be the Conway School is going to or somebody should be doing this for Massachusetts, mm -hmm. doing that same thing. They did a 35 year, and then they have what's mm -hmm. called legacy tree. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it'd be great to have someone actually do the work. I think they're the only people that are yeah. like doing that modeling, but I get what you're saying. That's why I'm saying they're yeah. continuing to do it. So I think there's going to be actually publications come out for the northern US or northeast US. This is what we, this is the trees that are mm -hmm. going to move forward. These are the ones we should limit our planting and hope for the best, you know? Jen, I, ju I just don't think we're there. I just noticed one other thing. I, um, I noticed that there are some NAs, um, you know, not applicable. Yes. Um, and, and a couple of them, like uh, the Coosa Dogwood is quite popular. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the reason why NA is because it's, it's not, not in here. So, so I feel like in those cases, it's almost incumbent on us to put a few things in the section. Like, for example, oh. Coosa Dogwood has an edible fruit. It's got things that drop, and there happen to be edible. So I'm just wondering if we should um, fill those in with a little bit of the, the details that would otherwise be in, in the Vermont Guide, but they aren't, but that aren't. I mean, especially for the ones that are, are, are pretty popular. Um, can I ask why? We have a guess why it's not in the long down. It's not for on that zone or something? Yeah, it might be. Uh, I would suggest for layout, just a thought, you might consider putting a footnote. So if you have space down here, you can put like a little footnote, one, and then have Pistaga, and then some of those things. So you're not going to be able to fit it in that whole box. Yeah. Right? Well, so I can just some other technique. I'm just noticing there's a lot of them. Or it could be another, I mean, it could be a single page, but you know what I mean? It could be uh, page. additional page that we could make that no. isn't in the Vermont guide, but then that's going to hold it up being put together. You know what I'm saying? It seems pretty critical because it's, it's, you know, we're talking about 20, at least 20 trees, maybe. I don't know. I mean, that's a rough guess. Maybe not 15, two. So, so. We could do it. I'm just saying it's going to be by the time me or somebody else goes through these trees and writes up all the details and then gets it to um, gets it to Alicia to put it in. You know, you're, it's not going to be a week. That's all I got to say. <laughs> you know, I mean, we could either put this out now and then say, okay, somebody's working on that. You know what I mean? Because to, it's it's just time. It's not a very um, easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. Is attribute a number or something to each of the little icons. One is flowers, two is fruits, whatever, and just put it as the sub key. And then you, and then in the notes section, you can just write one, four, six. 
Yeah, that, that could get hard for the reader to read. I mean, there are because there already are one through six under, as limitations. You know, on page eight, go to page eight. Mm -hmm. In their key, there's a one there's through a six. There's limitations. Column. So we could say one through six, and then give each one of these a new number: oh, seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. But you're gonna have to. I mean, we type this page. Every other page. Well, no. You have to add two pages. You can. Yeah, I have one page. I have two pages. What do you mean? Go ahead. Add page. With this timing. Okay. Just put the key. Put yeah, the key right it. here. On each page, and then in the notes section, is that A B C one four six? Well, um, the, if you look at this though, if you go to a particular page, say page 10, and you look yeah. you look at the keys, there's also smiley faces and frowning faces, and there's also hardiness so zone, mature height, crown spread, soil <laughs> volume. So it's a little bit more cumbersome than yeah. I originally. It's true. I was prioritizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. that idea of just adding the page at the end, and then like, just put page 26, and then have to push the dog with, drops, drops, roots. Um, I know. I know. I asked, I had asked Molly to look at this with a fine tooth comb, and she was she was willing to do that. And I know that she doesn't have a lot on her list right now. I'm willing to ask Molly if she would look at these 14 trees that don't have anything assigned to them and give some data. Sure. Even if she put it in a sheet, you know, some kind of format. Yeah, we could even just put that, it in. Uh, and, and we could we send it to Alicia and say, can you make this page? 20, 30. Page 30. Page, or whatever. Well, it should be page 26 and then change so Everything it's consistent else. with the rest yeah. of the pages. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and then uh, just move 26 to be 27, 27 mm -hmm. to 28, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, if it were only three trees or something like that, I'd yeah, say, I know, know, but yeah. 14 trees is not, it's not insignificant. And I've got uh, four comments from Molly, um, like some spelling things, and one medium tree should be a large, and uh, and the notes under Fuja Occidentalis. Uh, the lady in white cedar should be favorite browser here. Okay, so I will ask Molly if she'd be willing to um, to fill in some of the data around this. Yeah, if she could just put it in a, I mean, the easiest thing would be to, you know, just put it in some kind of a chart form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and just we could send the chart. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 And I'll pass um, these other recommendations. Uh, between yours and uh, Molly's on television. Okay. And when we do do another version, I'd be happy if folks are interested to do some sort of, you know, you know, most like I just happen to have this in my bag today. Mm -hmm. This um, structured soil. Mm -hmm. You know, the most thing when we first open them is sort of like some sort of acknowledgement of contribution mm -hmm. um, that provides just like a little bit of overview. And well, I mean, you know, what's the harm in what's the yeah. harm in you drafting something like that? We're already delayed. No, I'm just saying, if in another version, if well, but I'm saying we might be able to squeeze it into this version. If, oh, oh, since we're getting delayed now, yeah. by this, okay. you want to just go ahead and draft something? Yeah. Okay. Can we? Okay. I just want to know where, like, put it at the very end. Yeah, it would just be a no. It would be a matter of repaginating, so it would probably be the first page. Okay. But you know, let's let's see the draft. Yep. And and then see. Okay. Can I ask you? Wait a minute. Todd's hands. So um, unless it gets incorporated as an ordinance, this is a fairly toothless document. So I think the next step is to maybe meet with Wayne and talk about how we can incorporate this into the existing subdivision rules and regs and the city zoning ordinance so that it actually has teeth. And that's kind of was going to similar similar points. When we say currently over planted, what does that mean to someone who's using this list? Like a developer gets the list, it's currently over planted. Well I like maple trees. I mean, is, are we saying don't do that? Or what are we saying? It says currently over planted planted limit planting. Yeah I know, but so I'm limiting it. I'm only planting fifteen of them. 
if that client wants it, yeah, the builder. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Well, they, these are all for all for plans that go before either the planning department, the DPW, the, uh, DPW, or the planning commission, and the onus is on them to regulate per the huh. adopted strategy that we would make into law. So in theory, they, they those one of those commissions can say, hey, you're doing it based on this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hopefully they'd have this in front of them and look it up and go, oh, okay, so you plan to do everything in Acer Truncatum, right. but that's not going to really work for us. Okay. But it's loose. It's not strict. It can't be strict. No, I know. But I'm just wondering how it has any heat and yeah. what and, and cause kind of scope there. Okay. All right. Thank you for your continued work on this. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. I'll ask yeah. Molly yeah. about sure. I'll ask Molly if she can do that. All right. Forbes Library we've already talked about. And yeah. South Street planting. Is there anything additional to talk about that? Well, just that we will we should set a date, but that it should be a date after the date the date of fall. So the nearest date after the you want to wait to see how the season progresses no, and see what falls? November 1st? I think probably the first Saturday in November okay. would be my guess. I think the trees, the leaves are going to drop early this year because of the strange weather we've had. Has anyone so, noticed that sugar maples are going straight to brown leaves? Sure. Yeah. They're also, because they're, you notice they have a too much more smear up. So they're, this is a mask year for them. And they're, they don't, they don't have the reserves. They don't have the reserves came left the junior drop. To actually hold their color. It's horrible. my yard ugly. It's so <laughs> depressing. <laughs> but no, is would it you like a red? Would you like to cut a couple of shade trees? <laughs> no, it's my shade trees. Are color color. Color. <laughs> so they're turning straight to it because there's been two tough years of that. There's two years of drought. There has been, this year has been not a drought year, but it has, there's been a tremendous amount of uh, disease pressure. So a lot of these trees have had uh, a lot of uh, different diseases. And so now they are putting out a tremendous amount of Samaras uh, for survival. Their seeds. 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 Yeah. For, it's a survival mechanism. Oh, I see. So the, the red maples did it in the spring. So if you notice, wow. the red maples suffered all summer long, a very thin canopy. So the sugar maples are now in the process, and they don't have the energy left to uh, to make their color, so they are turning brown. Mm -hmm. Same example of the northern maple, so they just they don't turn colors per se. Well, they do turn colors, yeah, I guess, yellow. Oh, yeah. But they're now they're just like brown. They're just rolling up and falling off. Okay, so the trees that are losing their leaves are mm -hmm. is this portent for many of them? This is what for you think that we're looking at a, a problem with the trees that will die. It's early loss. I don't know about the early loss of this the leaves. I think it's just the it's the stress. it's the stress of the last three years. Right. I mean, you have trees that huge trees have anthracnose on them. Yeah. You know, which they had anthracnose all summer long, and they're fighting anthracnose, mm -hmm. dropping leaves off, mm -hmm. relief. Mm -hmm. Then the anthracnose is in the ground now because it's on the leaves and it's dropped in the soil. And that's where over winter. So next spring, if we have a rainy spring and a rainy early summer, we'll have the same problem we had last year. Yeah, it's just a continuous How many years can we stand? <laughs> to be truthful with you, I, I don't really know because we're like an uncharted, we're an uncharted water. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't remember a year when we didn't, when here we were behind 15 inches of rain. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, we got, you know, more rain than we've had in two years. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's disease, disease, diseases are all over the place. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I think, to be honest with you, I've noticed uh, that we've had tree keeper has identified, you know, 900 some odd trees have to be removed. But I'll be honest with you, we, most removals we've done are removals that actually are trees that died that were still alive when the, the, the inventory was completed. Wow. So we're so that's just so to kind of give an in, indication of where we're at. Yeah. So the first Saturday in November, South yes. Street. Yeah. Yes. And the, will there be a, um, a specific day or something for Forbes planting? When will that, that, that come that's about? That's all going to 
uh, depend upon when I can get the national grid to commit to remove those two trees on the west lawn. So then you have a date? Yes, once I have a time frame when he's going to do that, then, it, then I have to actually go and cut down the other, the, our department has to cut the other three trees, and then we have to uh, grind all the stumps, because I want to be out of there completely and have, you know, bare lawn, I guess you could say, in a sense, and, and get good planting locations and make some amendments to the soil that's there. Would that be spring, maybe? No. Oh, fall. Oh, it is fall. Yes. Yes, I, I, we need to, I think that was the commitment that we made, and we need to find a way to honor that commitment. Even if it's after South Street, it'll be, I'd like it to be done before this, uh, before snow flies. Rob, the 104 trees you mentioned, does that include South Street? Yeah. That's everything? Yeah. It's all trees through, through this week. Okay. Three, few have been fine with this. Okay. Anything else about uh, South Street or? Okay. Tree Northampton. Okay. Um, tree planting is underway. There are another 20 trees on top of that 104 going in just in the next few days. Um, around town, and um, they it's been going on for two weeks now. Uh, just been dropping, we just keep been dropping them off, and volunteers have been planting and getting them in. Yeah, I'd like to add that um, this year, um, especially the trees we've just been planting and the trees we're planting through the next few years, uh, have been. Uh, a different kind of a different community based tree planting. So we haven't gone out to like and sent out emails like, hey, can you volunteer? We've actually planted them in clumps in neighborhoods and then people that live there have come nice. and planted the trees, which means that they're essentially a host. So we don't we're able to um, do everything from get rid of mulch things that can mulch to get water to uh, have the trees looked after when they're waiting to be planted. Mm -hmm to get people who will come out and dig. And, it's, and having a host, it just um, makes a world of difference. Because otherwise, um, Sue has to email those other people, find people to, and then people have to show up. Is the host finding the volunteers? The hosts basically pull together the group. So we're playing things. Well, it's like the neighborhood model. That's the neighborhood awesome. Model, yeah. well, so that's so awesome. Yeah. More so than awesome. before. So yeah. just for, for example, on Saturday afternoon, and it's Saturday afternoon instead of Saturday morning, parents take their kids to soccer. So they can only do it in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, we're going to plant four trees at Jackson Street School, and then two at a house adjacent to that. Bear Street. Bear Street, which is right, right there. So that's six trees. And the, the parents want to show up. They want to be there. And we're not, not dragging them. They're just coming. So there's one parent we're in touch with. You know, bring a bunch of nice. and the trees are going around. Nice. And he lives, in, he's the parent who lives nearby. Mm -hmm. He wants to fill the rings of water mm -hmm. all that stuff. So it, it, it gets a lot easier that way. Heavy lifting. The caveat about heavy lifting, though, is that I'm doing everything I can to avoid being in these trees. Because mm -hmm. it has been very hard for their poor people who really want do that kind of work. Um, the moving and being a bit of a that's hard. So I'm more and more fixed on trying to avoid it. Mm -hmm. It's not that, you know, they still get in there. Any thoughts of um, doing a bare leaf order this fall? Since we, we, we realize the fall is a much better time for plant bare leaf trees? No, because we are going to be over, over, over our land. Mm -hmm. There's the amount of trees in the city. So, because we're adding the trees of forest. Mm -hmm. We need to kind of wait for It's not late, we can probably get an order, but then we would have to, we would have to kind of readjust our operating framework. And, and I like Jen's suggestion that we're ever going to do that again. That someone go get them. Because. Well, I mean, communities all over Massachusetts use the model of the chop going to them and use it successfully. Yeah. So I think that we just had a we had a bad one time. Is there data on the percentage of survive? I mean I've talked to 
numbers of big communities, Cambridge, Lexington, I mean, they are using, they use it regularly, and then they use the, they use the source. Yeah, it's the only place that's right. Yeah, six or eight, out of four or five. It was terrible, yeah. But it was also the drought year, and we had a whole thing, too. They, they died, though, virtually yeah. died. We planned it, and they died. But we didn't. We didn't give that feedback either to Shipley's or the trucking company. No, so we did the feedback to Shipley. You did? Yeah, yeah, and did they not respond? No, they, they, they apologized. I mean, they're, it's part, part of the problem is, is that when they leave Shipley's, they leave healthy. They're in the bag. They've been dipped. What happens to them in the trucking company, they actually is another story. Um, and I, well, you may not accept it, but that's just how the trucking company works and Shipley works. But I think the biggest problem is, is we should have planted. We should have planted them as soon as they came off the truck. Yeah, yeah. That's true. So, That's so what happened is that we buried them, which was the best thing we could do. But then the day we were unloading them, it was 90 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this winter, what we need to do is when we put a planting plan together for next year, we can include doing buried with plantings, but have an order ready for the fall mm -hmm. and have it all locked in as to where we want, you know. As, as the whole planting program for the year. Mm -hmm. So that way they were, we were all set and know what stock we're going to get that's pro bag and what stock's going right. to be there. But and so also, the sooner we can plant them from when they come off the truck. The well, this, I mean, yeah, you can right. only do what you But it do. creates a it creates problem because you, they, they, you don't know when you order them or when they're going to be delivered. You know what month they're going to be delivered. So you have to have a planting group. Oh, they don't have a date? They well, in fall, you have more flexibility because you're cold. I mean, you know, we can, so I don't want to go too much in discussion because it's kind of off topic. Um, if, if there's anything else Tree Northampton wants to talk about, then we can uh, do it. Couple oh, things? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry, no, I don't think um, Oh, yeah. Let's see. A couple of things. Um, we had, since this committee met, uh, commission met previously, there has been more work at mm -hmm. the community garden. There's a little nursery there. There's chips delivered and all mulched up and ready for some fall plant and weeded and with beds ready for fall planting when it cools off a little bit. Where is that soon when, when you go in? Um, the Bridge Pit Road. Yeah, I know where the garden is. It's a big tree. No, There's big a tree on the road. On the perimeter and there, sort of just before you get to the where the fields are opposite side of the yep. playing field, just before those fields that point um, in several plots. You can't really miss it if you go up there to the tree. Yeah, one plot over the big tree. Mm -hmm. And then I know since I've been involved with um, getting involved more with the trees in Northampton, people have pressed for um, taking more of an interest in the volcano mulching all around town. Mm -hmm. And it really bothers a lot of people. And there's a group up on Village Hill who, um, as mentioned previously, were concerned and Rich kindly went over and um, Rob has supervised hours and hours of working. And one of the people up there, Mindy, who has been organizing volunteers for the Village Hill Tree Lovers Work Days, as they call it, um, wrote up a sheet and sent it to the Gazette and copied me. So I thought it appropriate to share with the commission um, talking about how Rich the Tree Warden um, provided so much guidance and time and um, how Rob has spent many, many hours there. Written benefit from this revision trained by Rob Postal, who is the Tree Warden. Um, she also talks about Tree Northampton and how passionate they are about the work and how much they've done. For the last six weeks, 23 people have volunteered several many times. Seven work dates for volunteers from throughout the community. To date, they have helped 45 trees. This was, wow. Um, they've been working very, very hard up there. They're creating a really strong community program, all because they were able to get up there and get the information they needed and then a lot of Rob's hours. Each tree is different mm -hmm. and they 
are learning that, and she described, you know, the learning curve, you know, how much they learned, and how daunting it is, both inspiring and daunting, seeing you know, how much work it is to try to save these trees. And they have very strong pictures of girdled trees, and you know, what a mess that volcano mulching has caused in their community. But they've created this energy and involvement that's really inspiring. So. I don't know if the Gazette will write anything from it, but she credits the, com the, commission, the um, Public Works Department Commission and Junior Hampton for getting them going on this. What's that we, we, use, we use the model of the pruning work. Kind of comes from the workshop that Richard and we did, and we kind of break down the people with the roots that are going to come out. And, mm -hmm. And, and people have been to the training and so it's not it's, they're part of this whole volunteer training and there's a culture to it as Rob's reiterating it you know they're listening very carefully and they have point people and they're not just people going out and you know they make sure they have great tools and they're very careful so they that culture of paying professionalism mm -hmm. And they appreciate it, and they're doing a lot of work up there. And they want to let the community know, and they want people, they want to raise awareness of volcano mulching in the city. Yeah. So that's a really positive yeah. story. And yeah, I don't know if or how, because that will write about it, but I wanted to make sure that people knew that. But that's cool, because um, they can going set on. some fire underneath these landscapers. They do it. They're writing letters to the landscapers up there. There are several. Good, good. That's good. That's, that's the only thing that's going to create change. Yeah. Yeah. And also, good. landscapers up there are still landscaping. Right? I mean, yep. They come and see all the volcanoes yep. removed. Yep. You know. Yep. That's great. That's great. a large group. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Thank you. I want to get us out on time. So thank you very much. And we're going to move on to any other business. I don't have any. I have one quick thing. I don't know if anybody noticed in the is that today. Report New England losing 65 acres of forest land per day. Mm -hmm. Came out from um, Harvard Forest. The report was released yesterday, and it's mostly being lost to do, to develop. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. The main public radio had a piece on this morning. Too. Yes, they have never did a piece. Yeah. I can send it later. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other business? Okay, recap. Okay, let's see. I'm going to get the updated language from Alan about the trees planted in the 24th of the Yeah, yeah. Um, complete the tree planting report and map by the end of the year, by the last day of December. Um, nobody's going to ask why it's looking at 14 trees um, without data and filling the data. Um, can we buy the trees and the guidelines? Mm -hmm. Marymount draft uh, the front page for that in uh, Rob just as a tag. So it's the first Saturday in, in soon in November. Finish up the No. Yeah, that'll be a joint BPW phone here. I guess without an email. We will. To, to oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's all good. It, it'll be fewer trees than last time. How many? Okay. Motion to adjourn this meeting. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.